Yes, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I obviously can't do the presentation in Korean, so I will do it in English. I'm very happy to be here and have the opportunity to talk a little bit about developments in Hamburg, in the port of Hamburg. Um, the topic is totally different from the previous presentation, but I think in terms of future developments, in terms of future challenges we face in the maritime industry, it's uh, quite a good opportunity to share some thoughts and some strategies we have in Hamburg. A um, few words for myself. I'm uh, Lars Anker. I'm chief representative of the city of Hamburg in China, um, in Shanghai specifically, because Hamburg and Shanghai are sister cities. But when it comes to representation of our port, the port of Hamburg, I'm responsible for, for Korea and Japan as well, as we have very strong connections, especially to our friends here in Busan, in the port, and uh, the big Korean shipping lines. The port of Hamburg is one of Europe's biggest port. In terms of uh, container turnover, we are Europe's third biggest port. And when it comes to trade between the European Union and Asia, we are the most important port for trade between those two continents. Hamburg is in a quite unique position as a port. Um, Hamburg is an inland port, so we are roughly 100 kilometers from the North Sea, which on the one hand provides uh, some opportunities because it's much cheaper to go inland with a vessel. On the other hand, of course, it's a challenge as well, and I will come to that later. Um, as I mentioned before, we are very much focused on Asia trade. I mean, China, that's not really, a, that's not really a surprise, is by far the most important trading partner, which is for, I think, all of our countries the case nowadays. Um, but South Korea is a very important partner as well. So when we look at the overall turnover, more than one third of our container turnover is in trade with Asia. We make roughly 9 million TEU per year, so over one-third of that is uh, connected to Asian trade. Here's some short figures on the market development recently. Um, I won't go into details with that, but maybe just two, uh, two remarks. When we see uh, on the upper right side Sweden, this showcases that Northern Europe and Eastern Europe are very important hinterland areas for our port and for our city. And the other one is uh, on the lower left side, the decrease in trade with Russia, which uh, once again emphasizes the importance of free trade and the impact political situations can have on turnover and trade developments as well. So here's some advantages of the port of Hamburg. I won't go too much into detail on all of that, but I want to emphasize that we are a transshipment port. So we have a lot of transshipment and we have a lot of hinterland uh, transportation as well, which when I come later to the smart port issue is something that is really, really important for our strategy development. So this is a little bit Chinese on the, on the slide, I'm sorry for that. So this showcases the uh, rail connections. By railway, we have in the port of Hamburg per, per week. So we have a little bit more than 1,100 rail connections in and out of our port per week, which is uh, more than the next biggest ports in Europe combined. And that is something that in our overall strategy development is really, really important. When we see our modal split here in TEU, so for container, we see that the ratio of railway for hinterland transportation is really, really high. Normally you don't see that in ports. Normally you are very much relying on trucks. We have truck transportation, of course, still more than half, but more than 40% and increasing for rail transportation. So that's something that is really, really important. And when it comes to terms of efficiency, and to terms of ecological sustainability. That is the, uh, the future strategy we are going to pursue further. So when it comes to uh, 
the future developments, and that was something we've uh, heard in the, in the previous presentation as well. It's really important to be adaptable to change. I mean, even old Charles Darwin already mentioned that, and that's something we uh, want to embrace in our strategy development as well. So what we developed back in 2013 is a concept we call SmartPort. SmartPort consists of more than 20 projects, most of them structured as PPP projects, so public-private partnership, financed by our city and the port industry, with different uh, strategy areas. And uh, in this presentation, I will uh, give a few hints on what we do in terms of SmartPort logistics and SmartPort energy, but there are other important fields like crews or maintenance as well. So the driving forces between the development of a smart port project are shown on this sheet. So basically it's uh, three main factors. One main factor is, or one aspect, is the challenge of ever increasing cargo volumes and the concentration when it comes to time slots. Years ago, with smaller vessels, you had uh, quite uh, planable hinterland logistic system when there were several vessels coming over the week and you had to, uh, had to organize to get the boxes out of the port or into the port. Now with ever larger ships, those time, uh, those, those time slots are shortening, so you have at one spot or two spots or three spots per week, a lot of containers in the port. So that brings certain challenges when it comes to increased traffic and parking areas. The other aspect is that we are uh, challenged by an increasing awareness for environmental issues. Um, the awareness of the general public and the awareness of the policy makers when it comes to ecological sustainability in the port is ever increasing, so we have to take care about that as well. As I mentioned before, Hamburg is an inland port and Hamburg has the unique situation that our port area is just within the city center. When I walk from our city government hall to the port, I can walk about 10, 15 minutes and I'm directly in the port area, so everybody can imagine what that provides for challenges when it comes to uh, noise, when it comes to traffic, when it comes to uh, air quality and other issues. And of course, we have the uh, possibility now to challenge or to meet those challenges with IT megatrends and modern digitalization uh, measures. So today in this presentation, I want to shortly go through two of the pillars we have in the smart port uh, strategy. One is smart port energy with lower energy use and the, uh, the uh, increase of energy efficiency. And on the, other one, on the other hand, the smart port logistics initiative when it comes to optimization of traffics within the port and the supply chain uh, as a whole. So smart port energy consists of three strategic pillars. One is the development of innovative technology, so with the aim of reducing the dependency on conventional energy resources. This is in accordance with the overall German strategy of uh, increasing renewable energy use and stepping out of atomic energy and conventional uh, fossil energy production over the next decades. The second one is to improve the efficiency of energy use in the port with the aim of reducing emissions. And the third pillar, and that connects to the later on uh, smart port logistics system, is the uh, planning of transportation within the port and the reduction of emissions out of port traffic. So here two examples on how we uh, are structuring or restructuring our energy supply 
Within the port, one very important aspect for our port are emissions of vessels in the port. I mentioned before the port of Hamburg is in the city center, so especially when you have cruise ships, we have three big cruise terminals in Hamburg. When you have cruise ships, that gets really, really dirty when they have their engine running all the time there in the port. So we have two uh, new systems. One is the onshore, onshore power supply facility in Hamburg. Altona, which uh, provides onshore power for cruise vessels calling at the cruise terminal. And the other one is a floating liquid power plant on a barge, which is a quite unique and uh, first in the world system in this aspect. Um, and it can be, can be visited if you happen to be in Hamburg. And the other aspect in the smart port uh, energy system is the implementation of renewable energy in the port area, especially wind energy and solar energy on the roofs. So a few more words to smart port logistics and after the presentation I still have a short movie on that so I can go through this rather quickly. Um, as I mentioned before, Efficiency, especially in hinterland transportation, is something that is ever more important when it comes to our uh, challenge of competitive ports in Northern Europe, but especially when it comes to uh, satisfying customers' needs. So what we do is we integrate existing IT platforms, existing data we have in the port area that was a huge project over the last five years to bring all the stakeholders together to provide this information from shipping companies uh, via terminal operators to customs and other government institutions and to build a unified platform to provide information to every stakeholder in the logistics chain. So one uh, very important part of this integrated information database is our port monitor system that provides on-spot information on all the traffic going on in the port. Um, we have a lot of movable bridges in the port, for example. Those movements are integrated in this platform. We have a lot of information from vessels. And nowadays, we are able to get this information as soon as a vessel passes Gibraltar and Portugal coming from Asia, for example, and we can process this data within the port area and make an on-spot planning on when the vessel will call at the port of Hamburg and how to organize the hinterland transportation via truck or via train. Another one, a modern road management system um, with traffic control sensors and detectors with LED message boards to optimize traffic flow within the port area, which is very important for us as the port area, as I mentioned before, is in the city center and we have a lot of general traffic as well. It's not only port traffic, so the area is not closed only for uh, cargo transportation, but it has general traffic of the general public as well, so we have to organize this really efficient. Then, as I mentioned before, the whale uh, situation. We are increasing rail transportation very strongly in Hamburg and we integrate all the relevant data for rail transportation in this information platforms as well. And uh, lastly, I would emphasize on our Smartport Logistics APP app, uh, Smartport SPL 1.0, which we developed together as a port authority with SAP and Deutsche Telekom, um, which basically is a tool that any truck driver can load down on his tablet or smartphone and which provides him with information at what time to enter the port area, which way to go, so which roads to take, where he can wait, so where's free parking space, at what time he has to call at the terminal, where are the boxes and at what uh, route he has to leave the port area as well. Through this APP, we were able to reduce the time of any truck in the port area to an average of under 30 minutes, which is a 
quite remarkable development when you compare it to the situation before. So, in our experience, those measures that are really on a large scale of activities are helping to increase port efficiency by uh, large amounts, but it's still something that has to be interconnected globally as well. So apart from our own smart port uh, initiative, we have set up a system called chain port, where we want to include other ports worldwide in a system to exchange data. And we are talking very closely with our friends here in Busan, for example, very closely with our friends in Shanghai, with our friends in Los Angeles or in Singapore to create a system where ports interconnect with each other because every port now has this kind of IT digitalization strategy and to combine that and to have a network of efficient administered ports who exchange data is certainly the future of efficient transportation, especially when it comes to hinterland connections. Um, so now uh, maybe we can put the short movie um, to give you an overview on what smart port in the future really will be. Thank you. Our world is changing digitally. And with it, existing logistic systems will be changing too. The long-term goal of current logistics research is the development of a hyper-connected global logistics system. The link between the smart ports is based on a network of intelligent buoys, ships, freight and sensors, which permanently exchange the data and send them via satellite to the chain port partners. They are connected via innovative technologies that we will be strengthening in the future in order to create more flexible, robust and efficient processes. The future is near. Introducing the smart port. Welcome to Hamburg. The ports of the future use all available data and networks to increase efficiency, stability and flexibility. The hub of each smart port is the port traffic center, the PTC. All agents in the port have access to the information center and there they share all information that is crucial to their business processes. In the Data Processing Service Center, data is collected, interpreted, and prepared to be processed globally. From there, it is passed to the Control Center, the core of the Port Traffic Center. Here in the Control Center, the vision of an intelligent and connected harbor is most clearly displayed. The implementation of innovative digital solutions leads to a variety of new possibilities to renew and optimize existing processes, but also to the creation of completely new job profiles, which will be customized to fit the needs of the port traffic center. The multimodal traffic controller, along with support of the system, handles many future challenges. The causes of incidents can be speedily identified and solutions will be provided immediately. Using all data and technology, problems can be easily tracked. Any breakdown can be additionally investigated via live data transmissions and a scan of the vessel. A speedy assessment becomes a simpler solution. The system proposes options for action and instantly assesses their efficiency. Processes are being automated and the original task to organize the individual transport flows will be extended to the whole transport system. In addition, more processes will be integrated in an innovative way to guarantee the availability of the whole infrastructure within the harbor. Completely automated maintenance measures of the waterway are such a process. Automated underwater drones are used to inspect the condition of assets and any requirements for repair or dredging of port infrastructure. With automation of the maintenance service, costs can be lowered significantly. In addition to the automatic drones, there are smart buoys which also measure the depth and profile of the fairways. They also collect data about the tide, the water quality, 
and the flow velocity to complete the service system. Automated mooring through the deployment of sensitive sensor technologies, intelligent tugboats, and a vacuum pad at the dock enable the efficient use of time slots for mooring and the discharging of vessels. All information reaches the PTC and is analyzed there for faster and better decisions. This offers system management in real time and immediate reactions, even covering the subsequent logistic processes. Being responsible for roads, rail and waterways, the PTC will innovatively handle any problems that occur in transshipment and hinterland transport. Thanks to automated problem detection and the use of self-propelled autonomous single-service wagons, individual solutions can easily be provided. Triggered by the vessel average, the system performs a breakdown of costs and timings and recommends suitable alternatives. The future of logistics can be versatile. It is going to optimize the flow of goods and information in the ports through technology and innovation. We will work together to make the vision become a reality.